Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Racing Hotspot. My name is Devin Ponslesny. I'm joined this week in person, not on Zoom, in person, by Mr. Jordan Jenkins. Jordan, how are you? I'm good, Devin. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Getting ready for spring sports. We're gearing up for it here at the PPG. I know you're on spring break, so I hope you've had a great break so far. I have had a good break so far. Nice and relaxing. Yes. Uh, Recording this on Tuesday, March 19th, a couple days after the Bristol NASCAR weekend, as well as the 12 Hours of Sebring um, racing down in Florida. Um, Jordan, any? I know in the past you brought the short track news to us. And we're kind of, I'm assuming we're just going to kind of assume that role to you. Uh, yeah. Have you cover the short track stuff? <laughs> Any news, anything like that gearing up for upcoming weekends? Like, any thoughts like that? What do you mean? Like, no, like modifieds. What do oh. they got coming up? Like, any local short track news you've seen? Anything like that? Uh, Not anything local, but obviously the NASCAR Wheel Modified Tour, who had that season opener on February 10th. Has their second race of their season coming up on next uh, next uh, Friday, March 29th. So they had a definition of a vacation, pretty much, <laughs> between their season open and their Defin- second one. Definitely a little vacation for sure. I'll give you that. Um, yeah. So they ran at New Samarta. Then they have Richmond coming up next week, which would be with the Cup weekend. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, exciting stuff there for them. Um, trying to pull up the IMSA results because they ran at Sebring this weekend and I'll give you the top three overall top three I just want to point that out um, we had the Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Autosport uh, number zero six. Oh, 40, 40. Um, they won Cadillac Racing Number zero one was second, and the Porsche Penske Motorsports was number seven was third. Um, a lot of these names. There were three drivers per car. So third place was Campbell, Cameron, and Nazar. Second place, Dixon, um, Zonde, Bordeas, uh, and then Jordan, Herda, and Deltras. Is that how you say Delatras. it? Delatras. Delatras. Okay. So that's your. Those Obviously, are your t- we know who Colton Herta, uh, Jordan Taylor, who's been in yeah. uh, some Cup races and Xfinity races on the road courses, and obviously uh, Scott Dixon too. Yeah, he's an IndyCar driver as well as Herta. So yeah, for sure. So the top nine places overall were controlled by the GTP class, and then LMP two was tenth through nineteenth, and then GTD Pro was twentieth through. 28th, and then the GTD, GTD was all the way to 40th, and then it was a mix from there. So definitely multi-class racing, but it all filed out the way you would think on the speed charts for mm-hmm. sure. Um, their next race is in 30 days, the Grand Prix at Long Beach, uh, April 19th through 20th. So that'll be that's always an exciting race when they're running at, at Long Beach um, on the streets with usually IndyCar weekend as well. Um, not sure if they're with IndyCar that same weekend. I can look it up real quick. Usually they are. I think they are. I think that's where IndyCar is in about a month. Yep. Yep. This, so, so it's a two days before. Yeah. Because... So it's Fri- April 19th and 20th, and the IndyCar race is April 21st. Yep. So that weekend, they'll probably have their Grand Prix on the 20th, and then IndyCar will have Sunday the 21st. So definitely cool that they do that. I like when they have, you know, your supporting series, even if it's another a whole new series. You know, like with NASCAR, they'll have the Xfinity series, which is great. But, like, when you have IndyCar, you have the Indy Lights, but you or, or Road to Indy, I think is what they're calling them now. Um or Indy Next, actually. Um, and then you'll have sports cars, or you'll have the truck series for NASCAR or something. So that's kind of cool, because you're mixing your your two fan bases, your sports cars and your Indy cars, or your Indy cars and your truck series, or whatever. Um, looks like the next race for Indy Next is Indianapolis on May 10th and 11th. Nope, just kidding. April 28th. 
Thank you. The Grand Prix of Alabama. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Right in front of me. I just want to point out that was the bigger of the two. The bigger on the website. (laughs) And he he chose to ignore that one. I I didn't ignore it. I just missed it. Anyways. um, So, yeah, that there's our quick touch on IMSA, IndyCar. Um, I unfortunately didn't. I only watched probably four or five hours of the 12 hours of Sebring. But the biggest part of that I think we need to talk about is that that accident from well, it was a GTD, um, no, G, um, LMP2. Nope, it was the, dang it, hold on. I just had, he was, it was the top, the fastest series. LMP. GTP. Oh, GTP. That was it, not GTD, GTP, sorry. Sorry, folks. But anyways, car, leader, Contact, tire barrier, roll over. Yep. There's your re- and your, the car was your review in laying, 10 words. The car was laying upside down on the tire barrier as well. Yeah. So, like, and now, driver's okay. You know, racing accident. Nothing where it was like, oh, my goodness. Like, multi-class, multi-class racing tends to bring this type of racing up, right? Like, you're going to have a slower car, a faster car trying to get around a slower car. Maybe a slower car is a least experienced driver, whatever the case may be, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get the GTP car going into the tire barrier, hits the tire barrier, goes straight up because of the tires basically reverb it, where he bounces off the tires and he rolls over. I saw on social media, Facebook, Indi- or Instagram, uh, Twitter, or X, everybody's wondering, why would you put a tire barrier there? You know, you should have, like, why the wall? Why is the wall there? Move the wall. Do this. Do that. And I think people need to understand that you know NASCAR is huge on safety. NASCAR owns IMSA. You know, every every wall, every projectile is different. You know, somebody said, "Well, you should if NASCAR owns that, you should put a safer barrier there." Okay, so you put a safer barrier there. That car is now going to bounce off the safer barrier and possibly go back into traffic. You know, okay, you move the wall. Does that work with the infield road course to the road course? You know, like every facility is different. You know, like you saw um, Nashville Super Speedway. There was the uh, Ryan Blaney accident. He hits the inside wall at the end of pit road, and people are like, there should be a safer barrier there. Well, is that wall there permanent, or is that where the entrance to the road course is at Nashville? You know, like there are so many factors, and I think that people need to look at the positives. First of all, he's okay. The car did its job, and the tires did its job because he hit the wall and he was contained to that one area. He didn't go over it and hit a fan. He didn't go back into the racetrack. Which would have happened if the tire barriers probably weren't there. Right, exactly. So, like, you just you need to – I understand where people are coming from where they're like, what? Why did he flip? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? You know, you look at Formula One, their, their walls are far away from the racing surface, and most of it's paved this way. A driver, in theory, could spin and maybe save it or whatever, but every course is different. You know, that's not the case at Monaco. You know, you don't have plenty of room there, and they still race at Monaco. So point is, is I think everybody needs to just, we get, or I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, every situation is, is different. Every situation is unique, and NASCAR and IMSA and IndyCar and all the major series, even Formula One, does a do, they do a great job of reviewing each track as an individual. They don't say, oh, well, this is a lot like, they don't look at Talladega and say, oh, this is a lot like Daytona. Like, yes, it is, but at the same time, it's not. Right. So I'm glad to see that driver got away. I didn't catch, I don't remember off the top of my head which driver it was, but I'm glad he was able to walk away or they were able to walk away. Um, but definitely a big moment at a track, at a Sebring track that isn't, like, it's known for speed, but at the same time, it that section of track didn't seem like it was would have been a, a no. rollover accident. Oh, yeah, no, definitely not. You know, I remember last corner of the, the course, the car hit the wall. Um, driver, I think it was driver's side or passenger side, one of the two. And, like, everyone was like, well, it's a big hit. That's also a fast part of the racetrack, you know. So, regardless, um, glad to see everyone's okay. Definitely speedway safety is an always evolving conversation no matter what. No matter where, you know, where you are and what you, you know, anything like that. 
So. So let's move on real quick to talking about Bristol. So we had the trucks Saturday night and the cup on Sunday. And they didn't dirty the place up. They were racing on the concrete. Yes. Um, Let's talk about the truck race. Because I feel like the truck race was the most sane race of the weekend. It usually says a lot. Right. (laughs) Especially when you talk about the truck series. Now, before we go any further, I want to say the cup race was great. Yes. But it was crazy for different reasons. Oh, yes. Yes, (laughs) Um, definitely. But we'll talk about that. Um, But let's talk about the truck race because I think that, you know, great run. It was Christian Eckes who won. He beat Kyle Busch. And... And and that right there is a talking point alone because yeah, you have be, beating Kyle Busch in trucks. It feels like every time Kyle Busch is uh, starting in a truck series, race, it's like, oh, Kyle Busch is gonna win. But so well, whenever someone like a Christian Eckes beats Kyle Busch and Kyle Busch finishes second, it's like, oh, exactly. And and I think the way he beat Kyle Busch, it wasn't like Kyle Busch got wrecked. It wasn't like Kyle Busch blew a tire. It wasn't like Kyle Busch had an engine issue. He went out. And beat Kyle Busch head-to-head on the racetrack. And on, on top of that, finishing third was Zane Smith, who's a rookie in the Cup Series. And we know what Zane Smith has done in the Truck Series, too. Right. So he's beat. He fi- Atkins finished first, and behind him, second and third were two Cup Series drivers. Exactly. With one of them being probably the best current, not, well not probably the best current NASCAR driver in all three series, mm-hmm. and Kyle Busch. Yeah, I mean, and it's... It was funny because I think it was what, either the last caution or the second to last caution. Fox played Kyle Busch's in car audio, and Kyle said, "We're we're a second or third place truck today." Mm. Which does that mean he was having self doubt? He was, you know, going against himself. Who knows? Like who knows? Like how the mind of Kyle Busch, you know? But at the end of the day, he was acknowledging that there were other trucks out there who were better than him. And he at f- Bristol. And he said it's a second or third place truck, and he finished second. So right. Kyle Busch was pretty much dead on, <laughs> dead on with uh, <laughs> what kind of truck he had. Exactly. But, I mean, at the, like I said, though, at the, at the end of the day, Kyle Busch called it, as you said, but also second or third place truck at Bristol. You know, if there's a track that you, you know, you want to rename, it's Bristol to Kyle Busch's home. You know, Kyle Busch has dominated there. I mean, they have – he's, what, swept the weekend when they have three series there twice? It's you know, like he is he is great at Bristol. And there's been times he's won both Cup Series races in a Bristol season. I think he did it in 2019. Too. I think so, Most yeah. Re- more recently, but obviously with the next-gen car, which when we talk, we'll talk about when we get to the Cup Series, is Kyle, ever since the next-gen car, Kyle Busch has really hasn't figured Bristol out. Right. Which says a lot. Kyle Busch struggling at Bristol feels like it's impossible to see. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, Kyle Busch brought the caution out twice on Sunday without meaning to. But again, as you said, we'll talk about that. But it just, yeah. Other than that, though, truck race itself was solid. Yes. You know, it was a great race. Um, <laughs> we're going to, the the drinking word today is going to be tires. But tire wear in general for the truck race, oh geez, he's going back in our tech messages right no, now. No, I wanted to see exactly what you said about the Pull, uh, pulling up the sh- about the truck series race. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna get to the topic you and I have been deba- debating over text message for the last three <laughs> days. But um, but I mean, tire wear during the truck race was honestly probably the the best you could have seen. You know, oh, it, yeah. they come out, they're strong, and then thirty, forty, fifty, maybe sixty laps into the race, they start to fall off, and they're not completely falling apart. Hint, hint, wink, wink. We'll get to that. But like, um, <laughs> but like, it was great. I mean, they did a great job. The, the series did a great, or the drivers did a great job. They ran clean. They, you know, they weren't out there cra- doing crazy accidents and things like, or crazy silly stuff to cause accidents and things like that. So, I think it was overall a really good, really good race. I think so too. 
Yeah. And of course, Bristol, Bristol in the last couple of years, besides the dirt, has been hit or miss. Even with the dirt, it was hit or miss. But what I mean is that sometimes you have a race really good side by side, all the race, or it's just high line and single file. Nobody passes. Uh, Bristol Spring last year, and I think Bristol and the night race too is like the same thing. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm even saying like six or seven years ago, you know, when it was they would just the the racing line was enter low, middle high, low off, you know, and that's what everybody did, and that's where NASCAR started applying like the PJ one and things like that. But to see a a truck race, and even a cup race, come out and they had you know it was competitive, different drivers past lead led you know like it was it was good it was a solid truck race I, I would agree with that yeah i think yeah i think it was it was good and i think that that's definitely as a plus for the truck series because <laughs> they've had a couple rough weekends this yeah. year yeah. <laughs> um, yes. but no so what do you what are your thoughts storylines key points to the truck race. I mean, I I agree with everything you said. I thought it was a, a nice, calm race. And uh, obviously the exciting points were when the, the tires were off. Mm -hmm. And it was with the truck series was about 50 to 60 laps, like you said. But, I mean, we've known Christian Eckes ever since really the last couple of years, but really last year, he was a dominant driver last year. Yep. And... He just knows. I mean, he had Christian Eckes had four wins last year, and I don't. Did he make the championship four? If he didn't, he was close. Like I remember, he w I don't. I don't. Remember. I don't. I don't. Remember, I don't quite remember who the championship four was for the truck series on. race let was. But can, let me let me do a little research since you do most of the research here. But uh. Either way, either way, I guess had a really good year last year. Four wins, ten top fives, and twenty three races with three poles. And even early, early on this year, he's looked good. He's finished with his one bad finish being Atlanta, and we finished thirty second. But Christian Eckes finished fifth in the series. Se so he just missed. So he just missed before. the championship four. So, so Christian Eckes at Daytona finished tenth. He finished sixth at Vegas. He finished. One from the pole on Saturday, so mm -hmm. you really had that thirty-second place finish in Atlanta. But overall, I mean, solid a really stall, yeah, a really solid driver and a really solid year to back up what he did in twenty twenty-three. Right. Not to mention, and this might be a little biased being a Chase Elliott fan, but his paint scheme is on point. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't see it, folks, but Jordan just rolled his eyes, shook his head, like, "Oh my!" I will God, say I his his nav. I, I will that. say his nav seems probably better than Chase Elliott's. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I think it looks good on a truck. Yeah, that's probably what it, it probably what it is. It's because it's a truck. So really, you know, I don't really th remember really any bad paint schemes for a truck. I just feel like anything time. Yeah, I think like sponsor looks good on I, a truck. I think I think it's half half of it is the fact that we see two series with cars. Yeah, and then, and then, truck, then a truck. And it's, and it's like, like yeah, trucks. Yeah, it's like that's a different. That's different. Like it looks good. It's different. Um, no, I mean I agree with you though. I think, it, yeah, it, everything everything was right. For the truck series race on and, Sunday or Saturday night, and someone I want to talk about too is uh, the current points leader, despite not having a win yet, is Tyler Akram. Hmm. For, he uh, finished fifth at Bristol, and so far his finishes were eleventh, seventh, second last uh, last race at Vegas, and then fifth at Bristol. So he's finished top ten besides Daytona, which was just outside the top ten in every single race. So I mean. Obviously, he doesn't have the win yet, which he probably would want. Right. Or any driver would want. But, I mean, when you get those consistent finishes, you, the wins don't really matter when it comes to points. Obviously, you want to win a race, so you're locked into the playoffs. But but at the end of the day, you're, the points are what's going to get you to yes. that next round if you have a bad round or something like that. Like, we've heard it so many times, whether it be pre-race or during the race or whatever, Fox or PRN or MRN says it, you know, hey, you can't win the stage, but guess what? Second place still gives out points, right. and that could help you later on down the road. Especially you, Tyler Aker, he, he, he left Bristol with 41 more points. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, Christian Eck has had the most, obviously, winning or winning the race, but he ended up with 57. But Akram finished fifth, and he ended up with the 
second most points, and he didn't even finish second. Granted, obviously, Kyle Busch and Sane Smith don't get truck series points because obviously they're full time in another series, but. Right. Yeah. I mean, still, though, it's. <sighs> yeah. Points are, points are important for sure. And the fact that he hasn't won a race yet and he's still up in the top of the standings is is great. It's right. good for him. And, and it's impressive. You know? I mean, we saw that last year, though, with like. Was it Truex? Was it last year Truex won the regular season championship? And, yep. he, and then he, he struggled with yeah. like, all playoff load. He didn't. Well, no, I'm just going to say, he. I don't even think he had a win last year in the regular season, right? Or did he, he won he? in New Hampshire. Oh, that's right. We were at that race. He also <laughs> won at Sonoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I'm going to show you how much uh, you pay attention. That was a mu- <laughs> I, excuse me. I pay attention. I just want to point out, guys, that Devin says he's a big race fan, and then he goes and says something like that where he <laughs> where he goes, oh, the trucks won a race when we were literally at one of the races he won last year. He won three races last year. You know, I don't like when you're in person because I can't just mute you on Zoom. <laughs> 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 I just want to point out, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> mute you. <laughs> okay, just for the record, I've never done that. But anyways. He so, just wants to. It's, it's crossed my mind. No, I'm just kidding. Because um, my luck, I mute you, and then I can't unmute you. <laughs> I'll be like, uh-oh, hold on. <laughs> Hang on. Yes. Um. So, one more truck series topic. Yes. Nick Sanchez versus Stuart Friesen. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's work back. Well, no, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's, let's, let's do a quick recap. Sanchez and... Friesen were battling for position. Mm. Sanchez had the outside line. He was probably. I think this was on the. Was, was it on the front stretch or back stretch? It was the. This was the only ever track where this would ever happen at because it, <laughs> it's so so short. Dual, like, where they, where are they at? It's like, yeah, lane, where are they? Um, where are they at? Hang on, I can review review the. It was the front stretch. Okay, okay. So, so coming off turn four, Nick Sanchez was about a lane off the wall, came down a little bit. Stuart Friesen was probably two lanes up. He was right in the middle of the racetrack. They came off of turn four. There was a little bit of contact. A little bit of contact between them. Sanchez didn't lift. Neither did Friesen. And it results in Sanchez hitting the wall. And when he hit the wall, he bounced off the wall. Tagged Stuart Friesen. Sends Stuart Friesen for a full 360. He's able to kind of straighten it out, keep going. But unfortunately, it more or less ruined his day. Right. Sanchez continues on. He also, of course, had damage, so it didn't, it didn't help him. He didn't go on to win the race, as we talked about. But then post-race, we come to find out. Now, I didn't watch the Trek race live, so I will say when you texted me and said, did you see? Fox, I, Fox, I had, well, Fox didn't show that well, whole saying, altercation. I jumped on to Twitter. Yeah, and, that's where and, I saw and it, that's, And I saw something, but I scrolled past it. Because you're like, oh, I, yeah, I didn't see the race yet. Like, no, 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 sure. <laughs> um, but then when I watched the race, you had mentioned, did you see? And then I went and looked, and... A little bit of an altercation. And now, it started with words. And then, I don't remember if Sanchez said something or if Friesen said something, but then it results in Friesen kind of pushing off of Sanchez, team members getting involved, break them apart. Just your usual NASCAR confrontation where drivers talking with like f- f- five million crew, crew members around <laughs> them, and once someone grabs the other, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that makes sense to my right. opinion because you don't want – You don't want, yeah. You know, your crew members are looking out for your driver. Like, they're not like – they're not going to sit there and start placing bets. Like, they're like, okay, if he actually hurts him or causes an issue, then we could get fined. Like, big picture. Now, <laughs> off camera, Jordan texted me and asked me if I saw it. I reviewed it. And sent that was probably on Sunday morning, Sunday night. Yeah, so, uh, it was Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it was like uh, it was after the cup race. So. Okay, so for the last thirty six hours, let's say <laughs> we've been going back and forth. Yes, about who was right, who was wrong. Yes, and obviously we're not recording this live. I can't have any of you guys listening at home call in, which would be kind of cool. But um, maybe coming, maybe soon. Maybe who knows? <laughs> maybe soon we maybe, figure that out. Maybe one day. But like. I don't know. Here and here's what we're gonna do to make sure it doesn't become a shouting match between the two of us. I'll give I'll give you your side. You like you you say your side, I'll say my side, and then we'll 
respectfully <laughs> debate. Okay. <laughs> so, so go I'm ahead. Like, am I going, I'm yeah, going go first? Ahead. Okay. So, obviously, I think overall, I mean, it's probably a racing incident anyway. But obviously, racing incidents sometimes can be avoided. The picture I'm looking at right now has Friesen coming up on Sanchez out of turn four, like right, pretty much right out at the et- end of the Geico restart zone. All is right. Friesen you're, you're, coming you're up? You're wrong. You're wrong already. But keep going. I'm sorry, folks. I just had to do that for the joke. Go on. And Friesen comes. It looks like Friesen comes up on Sanchez. And now I'm showing my picture right to Devin the whole time so he can actually see it. Obviously, yes, Bristol, obviously, there's a one lane, like, unlike other, really, any other track, one lane is, like you said, like, oh, high up against the wall and then the end of the turns that go low. And I think, well, obviously, Sanchez and Friesen were running two different lines. Sanchez was higher up on the track more than anything. And... Friesen may not have realized, or Friesen Spider may not have realized he wasn't clear when he came up near the wall when Sanchez was already there. And so he tried to come up towards the wall, and obviously Friesen's bumper was right there. And that's what kind of started it. So I guess before I, I, you know, rebuttal, who is, who's wrong? Who's in the wrong, in your opinion? Friesen. Okay. Because he wasn't clear. Yeah, because he, I mean, obviously, they're running two different lines, and ultimately, in Bristol, there's cars move up, and cars, short trucks move up and down the lanes, but there's ultimately nothing wrong with it, obviously. But yeah, It's just a racing I just, deal. Right, and I just think Friesen came up a little too early, because ultimately, I think Friesen, it caused Friesen to pinch Sanchez into the wall, and I know you told me, which you'd probably say, on your rebuttal is Sanchez probably was gonna hit the wall anyway, but you don't know that un- unless Friesen was clear there. Mm. And I just think he can't, obviously what he did was nothing wrong. Everyone does it, but I just think because Sanchez was running the outside lane on him, he didn't realize he wasn't clear when he tried to come up towards the wall, and it ultimately caused Friesen to go into the wall. Right. Okay. Okay, your turn. So I know I just I didn't I realized I playfully interrupted you. Yep. Nobody laughed. We don't even have the laugh track on. That was awkward. I don't even think anybody would laugh anyway when they watch this when they listen to this. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but in all seriousness, I agree with you in the sense that it, yes, it was a racing accident. You know, it wasn't anything malicious. It wasn't like Sanchez says, I'm going to go get his bumper. It wasn't like Friesen said, I'm going to block him. It like wasn't, there, it there wasn't is, like a purpose. It wasn't like a right hook or like right. a, or like a, like what, I don't know. These guys are. Or what Kyle Larson usually does to his own teammates. There is, <laughs> there is no history between the two of them. Like no. any, you know, maybe clean racing history, right, but like but nothing where no. it was bad. The only thing I've really seen Nick Sanchez have a problem with was, uh, Matt Crafton last year, and I think it was, I think it was Talladega. Mm. It happened, and I think I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, I do. But so I think so that's the only, really only incident that Sanchez has had in his second now his second year in the trucks. Yeah, I mean, it's it is obviously it's tough. You mentioned it. It's tough to call if you know as okay. It's tough to play the what if game. Well, if Stewart wasn't there, Sanchez was gonna hit the wall. If Sanchez wasn't there, Stewart was gonna run his line. It's like it's tough to sit there and and guess what would or could have happened. I well, f- what we know happened was is Sanchez. <laughs> just gonna mute Jordan's mic here for a minute. No, 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 not hey. I didn't. I didn't interrupt you. He's looking at the mix. He's looking. At, He's looking at the mixer now, like, what do I do to unmute myself? Um, oh, nope. That's not yours. That one is. Um, well, I will. Can I interrupt you for one second? Oh, my gosh. It may have looked like <laughs> Sanchez was going to hit the wall because his line never was not going to change. Because right. obviously in the turns, he stayed exactly where he was. He never moved up. He never moved down. So that's right. probably why it looked like he was going to hit the wall because you don't usually see 
Chuck's really run that lane. But to play devil's advocate to that to that thought, did he get run up the racetrack by Friesen? You know, like I don't think so Friesen ran him up the track. I like, like I said in my right on uh, my thing was Friesen was doing his line, running his line. But obviously, so either his spotter, Friesen spotter, or Friesen maybe a little of both, probably more his spotter than anything. Didn't realize Sanchez was there. He probably thought he was clear, and he wasn't. Mm. So as he was trying to come up and continue running his line, Sanchez's nose was right there. So so okay. Here's here's my take on this. I don't think. So I understand where Friesen's frustration is coming from because he got tagged by Sanchez into the wall and unfortunately, most likely ruined his race. Right? Because he went at full three sixty. Whether or not there was damage or not, or a lot of damage or not, you know, you're now possibly a lap down. Like. There, there's so many things that came from this for Friesen. I don't personally see this being anybody's fault in particular. I mean, do, do I think, hold on, I know. Do I think Sanchez is in the wrong? Yeah, he should have lifted, in my opinion. Do I think Friesen should have maybe came down a little bit because of his spotter? Yeah. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, if I'm going to pick a side to say you're in the wrong, it's Sanchez. Because... As I said to you, Stewart doesn't care that Sanchez is behind him. That's racing. You know, Sanchez is the one I'm looking at, you know, looking at the from the flag stand view here, and I'm showing Jordan, don't worry. He's hitting the wall before he even makes contact with Friesen, right? There. Well, Friesen has, Friesen's already touching him right there. Because watch, when they go to the front stretch, Friesen already gets turned. They already have contact when Sanchez but, hits the wall. But if you look close enough, Right, there's contact right there. There, he look. He's in the wall. Y- yes, right. But there's contact right there, there. and then because he bounces off the wall and hits Friesen. But that's what I'm saying. Like but he was in the wall before he hit Friesen. Nope. See, there's contact originally right, yeah, right there, there low and that put Sanchez in the wall. But it, it bounced, because my... Sanchez bounced off a of Friesen's right fo- or. Yeah, right rear fender. But right there, hits the look, wall and bounces off again. Ready? Right there. There's contact. Right before he. Well, there's a little bit of separation right there. No, there's not. You can see the smoke. And then he hits the wall. You can, you can, you can see the smoke, right there, from the coming from the contact. <laughs> see, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> I think I think that Sanchez should have lifted. You saw it in the cup race when guys were on the outside. They would lift to then be able to fall in line, or even make the corner. I don't think. I think if San, if you look at the the trajectory of that corner. For Sanchez, remove Stewart from the from the equation. Sanchez is going to have to lift regardless of if not if Sanchez is, or if Stewart's there or not, because the trajectory of that corner says he's hitting the wall. But the only reason he hit the wall in that thing was because no, no, no. Before before saying, even Friesen spun, originally Friesen made contact with Sanchez, or I'm saying they both the, made contact. But I'm saying Friesen, before he even made the contact, his arc was going to suggest he goes into the wall. He has to lift regardless. Yeah, suggest. The momentum. Suggest. The momentum and the 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 arc of his car would, yes, you're right, suggest that he's going to hit the wall, meaning he has to lift regardless of if Friesen is there or not. But it's hard to lift when you're already connected because before no, no, I'm, sa- I'm saying even... before he even made contact yes. with Stewart. Now, let's put into the factor if he makes a little contact with Stewart – yeah, then that kind of pushes your car straight in the corner, and then yeah. But regardless, you gotta have to lift anyways. And Stewart has the line because he's in front, right? Yeah, but if you're Sanchez, you can't. You're trying to get a spot. You can't just lift because. But you're 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 playing the you're more on the outside line than Friesen is. I agree, but I mean, any rook or any veteran driver. If we had Denny Hamlin sitting here, William Byron, anybody, they would say, or most likely would say, I'll put that asterisk there, that. You live to fight another corner. Let off on the exit of turn four, fall in line, and then guess what? You're now on his bumper into turn one where you could either then go to the outside or try and drop low. You just have to be smart. If you look at Friesen, Sanchez or not, he's going to make a clean exit off the corner. Yeah, he's a little higher up than everybody else, but he that's his line, as you said. Well, he, that wasn't, Sanchez wasn't running his line. Well, he came wasn't. he came low, and then when he can't went to turn, he that's when he went up. 
he that was wasn't his line going. I don't think he was. I think he was halfway down originally, like halfway through the turn. He was in the middle of the corner the whole time. Yeah, and then he, that was three quarters up. Yeah, because and if Sanchez you, is already there. Because if you look at his exit, he that's his line on the exit. Like right here, he's pointed to run in line with that wall. He's pointed at the wall. No. He's pointed in line to then make a clean exit off the corner. If you follow his trajectory, his trajectory, I can't say that word. <laughs> if you follow where he's intended or and most likely going to go, he is going to come straight off. Yeah, right. You're showing me the same photo. He's going to come right here. Right up against the wall. Maybe a little higher than the rest of the field, but that's his line. He had been running that line all race. I'm looking at, I don't know who this is behind him right here. No, I got gotcha. you. He's halfway. Friesen goes from where this, where ultimately where this truck is, to come, he comes up. I mean, he's higher than where that truck is. Right. Right there, maybe. There's contact originally right there. There, right there, just right there, because the, you can see freezing get a little loose, and then that's kind of what put Sa- push Sanchez up more, and then obviously freezing, still going I, his line. I still don't think Sanchez. I think I think Sanchez should have lifted, because if you look at where he is, I mean, he's he's not he's in the third lane. You know, he should have right yeah, here. And we've seen lifted we've s- and then been able to fall in behind Friesen. And at Bristol, we've seen drivers run the third line all the time and they don't lift and they don't hit the wall. But they, they, some, most of them do. If their car is ill handling, they'll lift. If they have yeah. good exit. But Sanchez's grip. truck was handling well the, the whole time. But regardless, he was going to hit the wall. So you don't there. know that. I mean, you don't know that either. You said you hit ball. You don't know that either. I'm just saying. You said maybe he hits the wall. He's, <laughs> the line in which he's running, the suggestive path of him going forward is going to lead me to believe that he's hitting the wall. And Friesen's coming off the corner clean. Besides, I didn't... <sighs> Live to fight another. Live to fight another corner. That's the way I look at it. But all we know is that Friesen did not agree with Sanchez being there. Goes up to Sanchez, gets into him, fights like not fight, but like goes goes up against him and like makes it very cl- makes it very clear that you know he was not happy with Sanchez and his move. I mean, Sanchez is is just, he's a young driver, too. You know, he's got stuff he needs to learn. I mean, we're looking at a clip now on NASCAR.com that might have a little bit more information. Of course, it's Kyle Petty giving his two cents on it. Um, I mean, right there, Sanchez is high. He's doing the arc corner. Yeah, but actually, go play that back again. It looked like Sanchez went down a little bit, and then he had to come back up. Right? Right. There he goes. There, he moved down, and then... He's seen so now he's in the where Friesen was out of the turn. So he did come down originally, and then when Friesen came up, he it pushed Sanchez up, which is why I said Friesen pinched Sanchez up, and why you couldn't check up. All right, I'll give you that one. Because obviously, yeah, because obviously at, at Bristol, I mean, obviously stuff happens quick. Right. <laughs> so right. obviously, with Sanchez came down into the second lane where Friesen was, but. Obviously, when Friesen was coming up at that point, it move had to move Sanchez up, and obviously, with how fast they were going, you don't really can't really you don't really have the reflex to be like, oh, I gotta check up. It's just whatever happens happens. I will say though, looking at the the video right now of the fight, right before Friesen hits him, Sanchez is smiling and looks like he makes some sort of wise guy remark. Yeah, you could probably. You could probably tell that there you from go. the beginning with uh, because I mean the whole conversation was just Nick Sanchez smiling, so you had to assume you said uh. But I I, like that. I also just wonder though if if Sanchez, I also just wonder if Sanchez also he just, I don't want to say he's he's young. Well, he is young, but like is he just simply a young driver in the sense that. With the situation, 
he should have lifted, you know, then in the post race, should he have taken a more defensive role instead of being a wise guy? Well, it's kind of like, uh, I mean, he looked like he was the Joker there, like the right. smile on his face. Like he was like, <laughs> like it looks, it looks weird, you know, like, and whatever that's, I'm not trying to make fun of Nick Sanchez. Like every driver is their own person, but right. imagine this older driver, Stuart Friesen upset walking up to this younger driver and that's what he's met with i'm now upset i'm freezing i'm upset because you're not taking this seriously right and obviously it's kind of like i think nick sanchez did the same thing when matt crafton wasn't had a conflict with him at talladega in the fall right nick sanchez doing the same thing so it's kind of more like i don't remember the quite that incident if it was sanchez or crafton that really started it like the incident on track but I think it's kind of how the younger driver, the personalities are different with the veteran drivers and the uh, younger drivers. Like obviously, Xfinity Series, all you have all guy, mm-hmm. and then you have like or Sam Mayer or Ty or at the time Ty Gibbs mm-hmm. or Noah Gregson, who's still kind of on the younger side, but he's I, I would consider him a veteran in NASCAR because he's been racing. I think he was in trucks when he was like eighteen. Yeah, he was in the truck series and, and then. Obviously, him and Ty Gibbs had the whole conflict in 2022 in the Xfinity Series, like, the whole year. And it's kind of more like Gregson's been there, or this is Ty Gibbs' first year, and I think Ty Gibbs was 19 at the time. I mean, I think, yeah. And, there's no, again, there's nothing wrong with – no, there's nothing wrong with your age. There's nothing wrong with how you handle yourself. Like, I, I mean, I know I just kind of sounded like – I don't want to say I was making fun of him, but, like – kind of came off wrong but like point is is like it just it's all about how you handle yourself mm-hmm. you know if somebody comes up to you to fight you or comes up to you upset don't look like like don't look like you don't care you don't look like like pff, whatever buddy yeah go go back home you know like like be professional enough and i mean stewart runs dirt tracks up here in new york mm-hmm. you know so he, the point is is he's he is a short track driver who runs in the dirt stuff here in New York. He deals with all sorts of drivers. Did you not know that? No, I'm just confused how you're saying here in New York. Sorry, up here <laughs> in New England, <laughs> in the Northeast is what I meant. <laughs> um, obviously, we're in New Hampshire. But, like, he runs the local short tracks over in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, so point is, is he deals with all sorts of drivers. You know, it's he doesn't, it's not just like, oh, I'm a NASCAR star. Like, you want to talk about grassroots dirt truck or dirt uh, race, dirt racing, dirt racing, dirt racer in the truck series. There you go. Mm-hmm. So it's just like Kyle Larson. Right. Exactly. So whatever. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, what we know is that there was contact between the two of them. I mean, the only way you could really come up to a better situation is by looking at the the telemetry. Mm-hmm. Which we don't have access to, right? But like, if you look at that, there might, you know, you know, that might say, oh, well, Sanchez was at X amount of throttle. Then there's a little. Then they make contact. Oh, he grills out of the gas. That's because of the, you know, like you can NASCAR does it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, Chase Elliott right, wo- right, corner, right, uh, right, right hooks hooked Denny Hamlin into the wall, right rears him into the wall. That's where I was going with it. Well, it's now, a right. It's a, it was a right hook. Let's go. Well, yeah. But like, let's go look at the the data, and then it tell NASCAR is able to tell. Oh yeah, he he did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like he turned the wheel to the I left. I would say it's like the Bubba like, Wallace and Larson incident. At, I think it was Kansas in twenty two. Was, was it Kansas or Vegas? Oh, either one. The it might have been Vegas track, actually. But, yeah. but, but I exactly. mean, obviously that one was a little different because you know it was kind of obvious that that one was on purpose because Bubba Wallace did drive all uh, three lanes down the track just to get, right. <laughs> just to right. get the Larson. So that one but, was a little obvious. But, but like it's with, the same thing. But like with the Elliott and Hamlin situation, Elliott comes out and says, "No, no, I you know, I couldn't turn." Mm-hmm. Then NASCAR goes, "Well, no, according to your computer in your car, you turned, you turned left. You know, you you know, you so turned, your car could turn. <laughs> yeah, your car could turn. It just turned the wrong way in your like. But your, obviously, some something like that. I mean, obviously." Drivers aren't going to be like, yeah, I right hooked them on purpose. Oh, we've seen that happen. Unless, unless you're Kevin Harvick, who <laughs> just doesn't say, care. We, I was going to say, we've seen that happen. I just did it. I mean, All obviously, right. it, 
one, probably one of the most iconic moments over the last few years is uh, Kansas and Logano Martinsville. Mm. And you already know exactly where I'm going with 2015. it. 2015. Where it was obvious Kansas took him out on purpose. But uh. on the radio, I don't know if you ever saw the radioactive for that. Yeah. Kansas the screw chief goes, oh, I guess we lost the right rear there. And, and Kansas like, goes, yeah, yeah I just... Right, right front right, tires right, down. Yeah, right, right front just went down. I couldn't control it. And who knows? And obviously, no. Obviously, people knew that was on purpose. But Kansas was not going to go on the radio. He goes, yeah, I just did it on purpose. But I mean, also back then, they didn't have the technology in the car to be able to look at that telemetry. That's true. You know, so you could, in theory, get away with it and be like, I don't know. I don't know. Bro- something broke. I mean, and granted, now NASCAR knew that that was on purpose. Right. And, you know, well, I think Kenseth went out and said earlier that I'm going to get him back. Oh, so. yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> and, then exactly. He, and then when he did it, he was like, oh, I didn't do I, Oh, I, oh that my just, right rear. My just right, happened. My, I don't my know. right front. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, anyways. So, yeah, I think, like I said, the two of them collided. Stuart Friesen confronts him. You know, there's there's really nothing more to it. No. and And it's just something to keep in the back of your mind going forward. Next truck race, I'm not sure where it is, but next Toyota. truck. Oh, that's right. So this weekend, if there's something where they get near each other and they make contact, it's like adding another chapter to the book. It's yes. not, oh, what? Where did that come from? Well, let me go back to Bristol. Yeah. You know, so keep that in mind going forward. Like I said, I, I personally think Sanchez should have lifted. I can understand where you're coming from, where he, you know, Friesen might might have pinched him up. It, it's... It's tough. Also, those corners, they they get narrow on the yeah, exit. They you know, do. so it it might have been again going back to Sanchez's youngness, going, oh, I got into the wall. I'll just ride it off, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a wall. Right. You know, like like who knows? And again, without us either being in the car, seeing the telemetry, or having it on board, or whatever, or having one of them sitting here, we don't know. Right. So, any other thoughts on the truck race? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay. So, let's talk about the truck, the cup race. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over the we're going to go over the quick recap and then we'll talk about the tire situation. Yes. Cuz kind of like what we did with the truck race. Let's talk about the, you know, the quick recap and then we'll talk about that freeze in Sanchez. You know, like yes. things things that are going to take a long time to talk about. So, overall, Good race, competitive. Um, we had. I mean, you can definitely say it's competitive. I mean, we had Ty Gibbs sweep the two stages, one and two. Um, he he was pretty dominant, but right from the get go, you started to see the tire issue. Teams immediately started making adjustments. NASCAR did a great job of making adjustments by providing an extra set of tires and all that. Now. William Byron hits the wall. Yep. We throw a caution. And it messed up his toe link. Messed up his toe link. We have a restart. Jordan's going to get caught off guard with what I'm about to say. Tyler Reddick goes around. Hold on. We have a huge stack up behind there. They show a single replay, and they go to commercial break, and they never touch on it again. Yep. And they Fox never showed the stack up either. They were just red right. So I'm a huge supporter of Fox. Oh. Jordan's more NBC. Mm. But I will admit that that moment, I was watching the TV going, are you kidding me? They showed a replay of the stack up going to break. And one thing, and, one, it. and one thing, uh, well, going back to that, was they did it at Phoenix too when H- Hamlin spun mm-hmm. by himself. And there was a, Side by like side battle for the lead. Yeah. And they didn't show the battle for the lead. They were just focused on Hamlin. They were showing like the middle of the pack, but you could see Hamlin in it because kind of how the camera angle mm-hmm. was. And I, I don't know, I don't even know who was at front at that point. But there was two cars. I think Reddick was one of them. And then he was side by side with someone else. Hamlin spun. They ne- and they didn't show the side by side battle for the lead. And everyone knew because obviously in the camera, you see, oh, there's two cars up front side by side. Right. It's like, oh, who is that? What's yeah. going on? So so that, that I will say, kind of upset me. Anyways, so Ty Gibbs sweeps the stages. And at that point in the first end of the first stage, we started to acknowledge the trend of tire issues. Kyle Butt or Denny Hamlin gets in the wall. And then Kyle Bush blows a tire. Unrelated. Mm-hmm. Kyle Busch drives backwards down the racetrack. Yeah, which um, which 
I feel like it's at this point not a NASCAR season unless Kyle Busch does it at least once a year. Oh, yeah. Because he exactly. did it last year. I forget what track he did it at. He but did it one year at Charlotte. He did another year at... Um, he did it last year, too. He did. I no, forget, no, no, yeah. I, I, forget I, tra- I forget what track he did it at, but either way. Yeah. I mean, it's not a NASCAR season unless Kyle Busch Without does that Kyle once. Kyle Busch doing that. Yeah. Um, so but, it's officially uh, NASCAR season. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but, I mean, so, so you have basically... Your your accidents on Sunday were related to tire issues, which again we'll talk about more in a minute. But then, last run of the race, Goodyear releases a set an extra set of tires, um, and they're they're running, and it looks like a video game, and because of everybody hitting pit road and driving slow and all that, it, and then, um, and then Denny Hamlin Truex wind up battling it out for the win. Truex get by Hamlin. Hamlin uses lap traffic to his advantage. Hamlin wins the race. Um, it almost wasn't to his advantage, although he was having trouble at that point because Truex, I mean, made his lead from a, a two second lead to, to a tenth of a second, just right. like that, because he couldn't pass. Right, exactly. But since you just said it feels like a video game, oh, I saw, I that. saw the the video of Briscoe posting on Twitter of him on fresher tires. No one else is. He's just. So it's like NASCAR Heat Five on what, easy mode. Just what, was, <laughs> what was it? Um, I think Roush Fenway Keselowski posted the same type of video, and they did it like where it was uh, Super Mario Brothers, where they came off a of pit road, and he got like the the mystery box, and it was a set of tires, mm-hmm. and then it was like, and he was like passing everybody. It was I saw it on Instagram, um, but uh, it was it was social media gold for them. Like, well done by. Again, I believe. Did, did believe you ever? Roush did, Fenway Keselowski. Did you ever see uh, the what the track looked like after the race? Yeah, a all the tire of, rubber, a lot of marbles. Uh, it was a lot of tire, a lot. Yeah, that was, yeah. I guess that's the the wording for it. Is marbles? Insane. Hang on. I thought they posted it, or was it was it Chris Busher? <laughs> and it literally is just his onboard of him going by, you know, slower vehicles, but it's with the Mario Kart, yeah. you know, music. <laughs> and he's just going past everyone. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it was really NASCAR He 5 on. It was great. <laughs> and real quick, all credit to Chris Busher and his social media team for yes. posting that yes. um, before somehow we get sued. But, um. <laughs> No, it was it was awesome. It was it was funny and and it was like like I said, it seemed like a video game. You know, I was watching the race and I mean, I don't know how many times people at home have watched like played NASCAR Heat on whether it be PS5 or or Xbox or even on iRacing where you set it to let's say ridiculous amount of tire wear. So you play the the tire wear strategy game mm-hmm. and you're like the first to pit road, you get it's tires, then everybody <laughs> else slows down and you're flying by <laughs> and you're lapping everybody. It felt like that, it's like really watching good. on TV. It was like, okay. And because at one point, it was just Alex Bowman on the lead lap. Yeah. Everybody else was down a lap. I was <laughs> like, are you kidding me? And Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick kept saying, there better not be a caution because that was going to trap most of the field down a lap. Yep. And imagine if that caution had come out, well, how, that, how that could have created well, so much chaos. Well, it didn't matter because uh, at the end of the race, there was only five cars on the lead lap anyway. Well, no, so but I'm still saying the when, same thing. But I'm saying when Bowman was... The only oh, car on yeah. the lead lap, he gets caught, or there's a caution, he would then be the only car on the lead lap, and then one other car would get the free pass. Everybody else would be on a lap down. Yep. So it would just be basically a two-car race. Yep. So it's just, it's crazy. Now, this can kind of cycle into talking about the tire situation. NASCAR, they acknowledge it. They're doing the, teams are doing the, the tire strategy, and immediately they're saying, you know, NASCAR might cut this race short because we don't have tires. Mm-hmm. For those of you who might not have caught it, basically what was happening was 50 laps into the run, not even. Maybe it was, 30 like, it was 40. like 20. It was, it was like two. it was generally like 20 laps on, it, on the run. There it was, was tires were going it, down. Tires were and tire wear is good, right? You want tire wear, and then, <laughs> but not and, not and, at extreme levels like that where well, it's like oh we gotta go go back to well, road. 20 laps and oh gotta go back. Well, I was gonna say everybody for the last I don't know what feels like two years have been saying we need tire. Where we need tire yeah. wear, and 
what was happening was you were having tire wear to the point where if you ran 50 laps, you were going down to the cords. Yeah, you're on your rim. And <laughs> and yeah, and it was so bad and and immediately NASCAR does their math and they realize okay, these these teams need another set of tire, another set of tires. Goodyear brings an extra set, which is always good. So Goodyear releases those that allowed for these teams to make it all the way home to the end of the race. Goodyear comes out mid-race. I think it was like Bob Parker Bob Parker puts it on Twitter and Goodyear comes out and says we don't understand what's happening. Yeah, and during the race, you might, I don't know if you missed it, they interviewed the uh, Goodyear, t- I forgot who, who exactly who he mm. was for Goodyear, but whatever it was, he, they, yeah. interviewed, they were interviewing him during the race, and he was, they were like, NASCAR told us to make a tire that has more tire wear. Right. But they but said the, Br- the from the Bristol night race it's in the September, the track has reacted differently right, than what it did brought, at the night race. They brought the same tire from last year. Yeah. Like, what the tire they ran on Sunday was the same exact compound and everything from what they ran in, in September. Mm-hmm. And the the biggest thing that people were saying was, sure, a spring race in, at Bristol could be warmer depending on when, you know, if the sun is out and things like that. But the track temperature was similar to September. The weather was similar to September. Everything was similar. The only thing that was different was, was they put the resin down yes. instead of the PJ1. Which is, like, you should put the resin for the dirt trip. For the dirt track, I, when it was Bristol Dirt, I believe, is what I was hearing people say. And a lot of people, like Chase Briscoe, I, th- I think it was Chase Briscoe. At the end. Oh, no, it was Alex Bowman, actually. Mm. Alex Bowman, on f- I think it was his Fox interview, said, I don't know what was going on out there with the tires, but I think it was a lot of people, but he, he says he thinks the resin had to do with the tires being like that instead of the PJ1. Well, I mean, and they, so Tire Wear 101 says that your tires obviously are going to wear. It's the same thing with our car tires. If you are going on the track doing five, you know, 50 laps at 100% with no tire or tire rubber buildup, you're going to wear tires, right? Um it's the same thing what what with what was happening. If you looked at that track, you're used to seeing concrete tracks whether it be Martinsville, the in the corners, Dover or Bristol. They lay down rubber during the race, and then during caution, you know, they'll pick it back up, then they'll lay it back down. It looked like it was a brand new racetrack the entire race, except for the marbles. Yeah. But even then, it the track, the concrete did not take rubber. And the like you said, the question is, is was it the resin? Was it the resin that was getting spread across the racetrack and it was causing the rubber not to go down? Um, Ryan Blaney came out and said, well, it's clear that they brought a new tire compound. They just didn't test it. Right. Which I saw that. And they and I test, was like, well, they test, they did a tire test at Bristol. The, the good year person said, but it was, it before wasn't, last it September. wasn't, yeah, it wasn't for what this race was supposed to be for. Right. Like they did a good year tire test before last September's race, which was good. And then they brought the same tire compound twice. He did, as you mentioned, acknowledge that NASCAR and the teams were asking for, you know, a different a, a, a tire compound that would that would wear and everything. But he also acknowledged that they didn't bring it. Like, it wasn't like they said, you know what? Let's try this. Mm-hmm. Like, like they didn't bring the soft tire compound F1 runs. You know, like, they, they brought what they brought in September. So definitely something about the track was different. Now, I will tell you that, as Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick said, tire science is, you know, so much more elaborate than it was 5, 10, 15 years ago. NASCAR, I bet, they well, maybe not still, but they were definitely figuring, they were at the track, uh, Bristol, you know, Goodyear probably left a representative to say, go take sample data, you know, and then they're going to figure out, was it the resin? You know, did the resin cause no rubber to be put down and then this, just the heat of the, the competition caused this? Regardless, it it was it was an issue. Now, there's not many times you can really look at and watch an NASCAR race and you go, "All the teams ran out of t- ran out of set of tires." That never happens. And, but it, and here we are, like halfway through, and it's like every team doesn't have any more set of tires. My question to you is this, and I think they asked Ryan Blaney this: Was was this race was it bad, or was it simply that? They did not have enough tires. 
Like if Goodyear came out and said, hey, instead of nine sets, we're going to give you 12. Is that a bad race? No. Right. It, I was, agree. A, it was a great race. It's definitely going to be one to, uh, I think we talked about when we ever, every time we're back at Bristol was, oh, that, do you remember? That one time the, we were doing do you 35. Remember, <laughs> do you remember the 2024 <laughs> Bristol uh, spring race? I mean, it, it. yeah, I think that it's, I don't think it's a bad race. I think that the quote unquote bad part to that is that you just they didn't have enough tires. Mm-hmm. But I think if if Goodyear had said you're gonna have eleven sets or twelve sets, then heck yeah. And we actually, got a tire fall off. I <laughs> saw either Jeff Gluck or um Bob Pocker say when Kyle Bush had the incident, the first incident. Mm-hmm. Is Richard Childress actually went to the NASCAR holler that morning, or but where a little couple of hours before the race, whatever it was, mm-hmm. and they said, "You guys are gonna have a tire problem today," hmm. Hmm. because it was like that in qualifying too. Yeah, it was probably the most intense qualifying session that I've ever watched. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It, it, there's there the is qualifying something session, wrong. The qualifying sessions are two laps, right, or one lap. It it doesn't it doesn't line up, right? They went out, they did a tire test last year. They ran this at Bristol in the spring or September. It was fine. Then they run it the same tire compound in the spring. Completely different. So here here's my take on this. You either won the tire resin or the r- resin caused issues, or two Goodyear try to tweak the tire compound maybe if it was just a little bit right maybe they said okay instead of this we'll just we'll take it down a notch or two and because of that notch or two they missed completely and unfortunately if that's the case it would take a lot for for Goodyear or any organization to come out and say so sorry we did this I think the fact that they released an extra set of tires was huge you know, I think the fact that Goodyear has that as a backup is huge. I think I think it's good that way they handled it. Yeah, but definitely more question I, marks than anything. I feel like they should have released some more. I don't know how many tires Goodyear had, obviously, because mm-hmm. Goodyear was running low too. Was I feel like they should have released more than one set? Because mm. even after that one set, they were, there was they were another managing. problem of up. They don't have any more tires, right? And obviously, like, there was a lot of tire strategy. Like, I think at one point, Brad Kozlowski had scuffs on the left side and stickers on the right, mm-hmm. or vice versa. But so it was like, if people had different sets of tires on oh, on their cars, right. and it was like, oh, let's see how this works. I mean, exactly. I mean, and, and at the end of the day, you know, that's part of the strategy. And some sets were working better than other sets were. Like, I think uh, Kyle Larson at one point had, like, has like his fifth set was better than what his sixth set was or some, right. something like that. Right. It it's I don't know. It's it's weird how it happened. Something something happened and whether or not it's the it's the resin, I mean that seems to be the most I don't want to say obvious, but the most the one thing that everyone's going it was because of mm. because that's the most known compound or known elem known component to the equation that was different. But at the same time, that much of a fall off, you know, like it's kind of like, are we sure? Yeah, twenty laps of the tires are falling off on a right. half a mile short track, and they is only put it on crazy. the first lane in the corners. They yeah. didn't do the whole track. Like, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, the resin seemed to do its job because most of the like, and like that's the other thing. It was the tires were wearing quicker if you were running the top line. Where the resin wasn't. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, so oh. so hold on, hold on, hold that thought. So, if you're wearing the tires more outside the resin, then it's not the resin that's the issue, in my opinion. Well, yeah, that is true, right? Yeah, because if the resin was, if drivers were on the bottom line and they were blowing tires, well, okay, then it's the resin, right? If yeah, but if they were fine on the bottom and. Kyle Bush went onto the high line to try and do an out of bounds, out of bounds, <laughs> a high line pass, and blows a tire because of the heat where the resin isn't. Hmm. Anyways, maybe the resin is the reason the track wasn't taking rubber. Yeah, that's, so, that's probably like, yeah. And maybe you know maybe that's the case, but still, it was like made you think. Anyways, what were you gonna say? But uh, I'm gonna go off topic for a quick second. Is uh, okay. Who taught Kevin Harvick the younger lingo? 
<laughs> so if you listen to, uh, and, if you listen yeah, to this and podcast, I, lo- I love it. I love it because if you, uh, <laughs> if you listen, listen to Happy Hour, there's definitely some younger <laughs> lingo being thrown around during that, and I think that's where he's learning. And Kevin Harvick, uh, like right before the race, uh, they went to Kyle Larson's team communications. <laughs> Harvick goes, you know, if you're Kyle, Kyle Larson's crew, you can't, you don't really gotta do much because you, all you gotta do is sit around and let him cook. And it, Mike Joy and Clint Boyer started dying laughing, and it was like, and I saw it on Twitter. It was like, who's teaching Kevin Harvick all this? I mean, because there was a couple weeks ago he did, he said he, something, he said like something that. to. Uh, oh, he's got that dog in him, yeah, or something said, like during a said, qualifying session. And he said something to Bubba Wallace, right? Oh, the paint scheme's lit, and Bubba was yeah. like, "No, don't, <laughs> don't say that." But I forgot who he was talking about. But there was one race where he's like, "Oh, yeah, th- this driver's got the, that dog in him," and everyone was like, "Whoa!" Well, I mean, uh, Harvick I, <laughs> on on his podcast. What's happening? On his podcast, there was talks of like, I don't know if it, I don't remember if it was Boyer or somebody on the podcast was giving him like keywords, like work this in mm-hmm. to try and make like like this week's word is, and it might be that, or it might be the fact that his son is what sixteen, seventeen. Is Keelan sixteen? Ke- Keenan, Keelan. Ke- I think there's so. no way Keelan's sixteen. Hold on, am I getting that old? I remember when Keelan was like eight. Keelan Harvick. Google this kid. <laughs> oh wait, Keelan Harvick age is a Google. Oh no, hold on. I don't. Is that him? Okay, so he's eleven, according he, to this. I was gonna say, there's like, there's no way he's sixteen. He's, <laughs> I was gonna, like, I'm definitely more older than him than that. He's he's young, but either way, it makes you wonder if uh, it makes you wonder if maybe. Keelan is uh, making him, making him speak in the younger terms. Would an eleven year old be able to do that? I mean, talk to Kaylin, my sister. Oh, that's true. She's she's saying stuff that it's like, wait, <laughs> what? what did you just say? <laughs> um, one of her friends said that instead of saying obviously, she just said Avi. Avi. Like, I'm like, what <laughs> did you? Okay. Anyways, um, so who knows. But I agree with you. It is kind of funny where it's like, with did the, Kevin just? How was Kevin Harvick again? <laughs> Kevin just said what? <laughs> but but I think he's Harvick, having fun with uh, it. Yeah, I, was, I definitely think Harvick in the booth is uh, feels like a rejuvenated uh, Mike Joy and like just because obviously he's fresh out. He's been in the next gen car. Boyer has not. Right. So Boyer can't. I mean, obviously he does, but like Boyer doesn't really have. Know everything obviously about the next gen car because he's never been in it. But Harvick just retired after this past season, so Boy- he's like, "Oh yeah. yeah, the next gen does this. Next gen does this." Boyer does also though have the the racing in general yeah, knowledge, yeah, which is good. But you're right, when it comes to the next gen, Harvick's like, "Oh, I got this." Yeah, exactly. When it comes, let to me n- cook. When it comes, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but no, I mean exactly. You're right. I my in my opinion, you're right on that because it's like Boyer can sit there and. Like it's a good dynamic. Mike Joy brings the the history and the stats and the facts. Clint Boyer brings the general racing knowledge about how a car is going to react to a hot track or a cold track or whatever. And then Harvick brings the specifics of the next gen car. Yes. You know, like it all works together. Um so I think I think Fox Sports is uh booth right now is is hitting off, firing off on all cylinders. Yes. And um, by the way, to Jamie Little, I hope she feels better. She wasn't doing the truck race this week because she's sick. I was gonna say I can notice. I noticed her voice did not sound the right. same on during the pit reporting. But some some of the Twitter people were well, or some of the ex people usually, out she there were saying do the truck race. I thought she did last week or Phoenix. She did, but well, maybe it? maybe she usually does. Oh no, she usually does do the Xfinity. It just on the no, truck. Adam, just Adam not, does Xfinity. Adam yeah, I, that's who. Yeah, I got mixed up. She, Jamie L- L- does Arca and truck. Right, and then I noticed she wasn't in there, which. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because during the week last week, I saw some things on social media where it was like, oh, Jimmy Little, Jamie Little's not doing well. Yeah. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um, and then I s- didn't see her in the truck race, and I was like, did Fox really pull pull the move? Right. And then the cup race, uh, sh- her voice is just was not right, right. there. So I think, I think it was more so that she was sick. Um, so Fox did pull a move, but it was kind of like a, you know, hey, we're going to protect – we're gonna help you. You know, you got to take a day off, go get better. Right. But anyways, um, hope she feels better soon. But going back to the tire thing, and obviously the short track package, we talked about it. Was Phoenix last week? Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about 
This wasn't a short track package, though. That is true. I want to put that out there, but go on. But <laughs> obviously, uh, um, we talk, obviously people are like, NASCAR, that is how you do a short track racing. You just don't try to make it a package. Obviously, Bristol's Bristol, and obviously it's hit yeah, or miss Brist- anyway. But Bristol's its own animal. But Phoenix was just not that great action wise, and Bristol was just like, oh my god, it felt like the Hunger Games. Like, oh, this tire, th- there goes this tire. Oh, this driver, oh, lo- this tire's gone. You know, mm-hmm. and I saw a tweet and I showed you it, and I believe you agreed from Jordan Bianchi of the Athletic, mm-hmm. and he said tire wear to th- for Bristol is similar to. Martinsville, Richmond, Phoenix, Loudon, and North Wilkesboro. The tire package, you're saying? Not tire wear? No. Tire like wear the, similar to this at Martinsville, Richmond, Phoenix, Loudon, and North Wilkesboro. That's what I mean. Like, it, that he, tire compound is yeah. what they'll run And then he sa- And then he said, we do one is to fix what ails the short track package. So he goes, so if tire wear has, if tire wear is like, I mean, obviously Loudon, there was tire wear, but not like that. Not like that. And, yep. but, um, because the tire wear it allowed and made the cars more closer. It wasn't like two x one by made, like five made, seconds. Made them tougher to drive. Yeah, and, yeah. I get, and I, obviously, I, I don't allowed is a track where NASCAR has tried to fix because obviously there was a there was a over patch the last there. yeah there was a patch where it was like oh my god, it was, yeah, it was, god. this stinks another, another race. <laughs> but over <laughs> oh right in your hand, I'm yeah. not watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think but, there's golf on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but over the last few years, New Hampshire's gotten better because they've tried. Along with the sh- other short tracks to try to make it better, and because right. uh, New Hampshire is not re- necessarily a short track, but it's a mile long, but it races like it run, a, runs like a short track. Like NBC says it's every time, it Martins- races like a Martinsville. It's Martinsville on steroids, is really what yes. Loudon is. But and so, so here's here's my thing on that. If that is the same tire compound that we're gonna run at Martinsville, Wilkesboro, Richmond, Loudon, all these other short tracks. Two things. One, was that the same tire compound we ran at Phoenix last week? I don't think it was. I don't think it was. And two... No, if, because the tires were different. The, if it, I think NASCAR said the tires of Bristol would be different. Okay, so if that's the same tire compound that we run at the other courses, first of all, don't touch it when we go to Richmond next week. Let's mm-hmm. see how it acts at Richmond on an asphalt the, track. In two weeks. Two weeks, sorry. Let's see how it acts on an asphalt track in two weeks. Mm-hmm. And two, if it reacts the same way... Bring extra tires. Don't touch it. Right. Like, Don't keep it like, like that. Like I can, but here's the down the counter to what I'm saying though. More act tires, more money. Yeah, and, and that's where I think NASCAR. Same thing with the horsepower conversation. It was like no NAS- money. Yeah, like, NASCAR is going to turn around and say, "Well, we're trying to save the teams money." I get that, but at the end of the day, if the teams have to spend a little bit more money to have a show like Bristol every week, you're going to. It might take a minute, but mm-hmm. it will take. It will bring new interest. I mean, did you see? And it's gonna give. Hold on, go ahead. And it's gonna give uh, drivers more of the younger drivers more experience in driving a car. <laughs> <laughs> we got an airplane going out. That, yeah. but um, tire the tire wear management. Obviously, the younger drivers aren't experienced in that yet. Right, as Denny Hamlin said in his interview, Martin Truex said in his interview. Two of the veterans they finish and Brad Kozlowski, they finished top three, and they're they've all been in the Cup Series for almost twenty years. Right, she Truex might be in twenty years now. Might be, and Tr- Hanlon's closing in on that. But so actually, Kozlowski's not close to that. Actually, so here's the other but thing. But either oh, way, sorry. I mean, Hanlon said once I knew there was a tire management, tire wear management race. I knew I had, I knew I was, I had a chance at this. Right, and Truex even said. At the end, like in his race interview, he was like, "I felt like I could have gotten to him if we, if I didn't try to use all my tires to try to get up close to him." Because mm-hmm. Truex used more of his tires, obviously being second than Denny would being the leader. Right. So obviously that it caused Truex to lose more of his tires, so he couldn't get to Hamlin. And meanwhile, while Brad Kozlowski smile on his face goes, "Oh, I like this kind of racing. This is right. awesome. <laughs> this is awesome." He, and he finished third. Obviously, he's on a Long race, wi- he's on a so, win the, so a long winless streak, and obviously, because I don't, he has not once he's been in RFK, and this is his third year now mm-hmm. in RFK. Right, his last race win was actually in twenty twenty one, where he won one race. So, so here's here's but, the other side of this. But Kazowski oh, was like, oh yeah, this is this is awesome. I love this. this is, right. I love this kind of racing because it 
Hamlin said it, because and Kozlowski said it, I don't think Truex said it was, this is what the it's they race like it was a grassroots short track racing again, right. where you it's not like oh it's pedal to the metal until you, our car burns up. No, it's we have gotta protect our stuff, which is what the short tracks are on here. The racers do exactly. or, or around the country do oh, exactly. So. You have a short track late model race at Lee USA Speedway. Guess what? They have one set of tires. Yeah, and they gotta run fifty laps on it. Mm-hmm. You know and. That isn't the science like NASCAR has. It's like Hoosier or whoever, I think it's Hoosier, Hoosier. brings the one tire. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's hot, it's cold, it's snowing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's what you got. Yeah. You know, and Hoosier didn't come and run a tire test. They just said, oh, you're running the short track? Yeah, here you go. Here you go. So here's the other side of this that I want to make sure we make a note of, and we have for the last couple of weeks, is Bristol Motor Speedway's TV numbers were up again. They were up 10% compared to last year's spring Bristol dirt race and up 11% over Atlanta, um, which would have been the same weekend a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So overall, the 2024 season remains up 11% over 2023, uh, excluding the postponed Daytona 500 this year. I want to give a quick shout out to Seriously Fast Motorsports for those statistics. But um, yeah, I mean, it's so... Again, not to the the only term that's coming to mind right now is NASCAR needs to let them let I can't even say it let them cook because <laughs> I can't even say that. But anyways, my point is is they ask what what's what is working, what's going on right now is working. Mm-hmm. You're getting viewership, you're you're getting excitement. I mean, the fact that that broadcast booth on on Sunday for Fox. They were on the edge of their seat the whole time. You could hear the Mike Joy and Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer were like, "We don't even know what's going to happen." Yeah, and, Har- and Harvick was like, "I'm glad I'm not racing. Right well, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm but, up here." But my point is, is if you're if you're the voices of your broadcast don't know what's going to happen, how do you think the fans at home are feeling? Right, exactly. The fans at home are, 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 are at home are going, "Oh my goodness, this is insane. This is going to be good," you know. And I, I felt the same level of on the edge of my seat. I guess you could say, as you would at Daytona. Like at any moment, a car could have went around. At any moment, a caution could have flown. At any moment, thir- 35 of the 36 cars could have been trapped a lap down. Mm-hmm. Like that is huge. With that being said, though, we have to be aware of the fact that only five cars finished on the lead lap. Yes. So if let's say we didn't have a caution in the middle of stage one, or the middle of stage two, how many cars would actually be on the lead lap? A uh, two. You know what I mean? Like, if we start stage three with five cars on the lead lap, how many cars are actually finishing on the lead lap? And exactly. I think, and I think that's where NASCAR then turns around and says, okay, we got to keep an eye on this because you don't want the days of Bill Elliott when he goes out and laps the field four times. Right. <laughs> so, I don't know. But we'll have to just wait and see what NASCAR does. Like I said, I think the race was a good race. I thought so too. Um, one thing I I'll say too is like I was I was trying to find the uh, tweet, but I can't find it now. Is uh, someone said uh, they talked about the lead changes so far, and the rate obviously uh, Bristol had the most lead changes in a short in uh, NASCAR short track history mm-hmm. at fifty four. I think was the final number, and. Uh, Atlanta was 44 lead changes. Daytona was in the 20s, I believe. And then it was Phoenix. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, but everyone was like, what a start. Can you ha- ask for a better start for NASCAR if you're in the Cup Series with all these lead changes and the finishes that you've had? <laughs> right. Right. I, I mean, you, you, we didn't even bring that up. 54 lead changes, the yep. most in a short, in short track history for NASCAR. Yeah. So tell me this isn't a good race. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, statistic, like, I can understand where from Goodyear, NASCAR's point of view, they're, like, they're, oh, this, they're, that stunk. They're, they're <laughs> looking at this going, oh, my goodness. But at the same time, to the fan and consumer side of things, that makes me want to go to Bristol in September. Road trip? <laughs> but anyway. That'd be just a couple weeks after we do Daytona. <laughs> that's fine. We'll make, technically, it's three weeks because they go to Darlington, Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and then Bristol. Not that I look oh, into is this Bristol, at all. Is Bristol around the 12th? Yeah, no, they're the, it's the cutoff of round of sixteen. Daytona's the regular season finale. No, Darling- it's not. T- Darlington is this year. Oh, I know. I'm 
sorry. Oh, probably because to, to you probably who's because going to your probably, first Daytona race, I'm sorry. There's no longer the cutoff. Pro- well, no, pro- it's probably because of the uh, Olympic break. Olympic break that threw me off. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think next year it'll go back to being the regular season finale, but uh, we'll see on that. But anyways, looking ahead real quick before we f- wrap up, um, looking ahead to Circuit of the Americas. Oh, what are your thoughts going into this weekend? Obviously, I haven't really thought about it much, but I haven't either. Any anything you're seeing on social media about the r- stage like breaks are back. Stage breaks are back. I don't like that. Yeah, me neither. Um, I honestly don't like that because it just it takes your strategy out of it in a sense. But uh, but yeah. So truck race, Xfinity race on Saturday, Cup race on Sunday. Working racing at the Circuit of the Americas should be a good race. Uh, always good. Yeah, entertaining. Like Coda's usually uh, is probably yeah, I think one of the best road courses on the uh, that they do. Uh, Charlotte, I'm not a clown on the Charlotte Oval because that's a road course, but it's also half the actual oval. So, but over like a Sonoma, Watkins Glen, or Coda, I definitely love. Coda's probably my favorite one. And the weather this weekend looks good too. Seventies. I don't think I don't think Mother Nature knows it's NASCAR season. It's supposed to rain and thunderstorm on Thursday. Oh, well, so that's that is. She's right. just coming and on Monday, so we really have a. The window. Yeah, we had the window. <laughs> Hit Perfect. your marks. Hit your marks, boys. But besides the 500 in the class, Mother Nature's like, oh, yeah, for maybe forgot it's NASCAR season. Or maybe she She's wanted us to have fun this year compared to last year. It was like, I, re- it was, I think it was like 24 races She's were gearing, impacted by rain. She's gearing up for, well, she realizes oh. that NASCAR now offers the wet weather package for short track races. So she's like, well, no point. We just will re- yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll focus our attention somewhere else. Mother Nature made it so <laughs> New England had to worry about we weather, which they usually weekend. they <laughs> usually do, well, they usually not New Hampshire usually has a perfect time. It's like oh, there's no rain. Oh, what's the forecast? Oh, eighties? <laughs> oh, sorry, ninety five. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's either you're soaked or you're s- soaked in sweat. But anyways, Jordan, any final thoughts on Bristol or IMSA or anything looking and or looking ahead to Circuit of the Americas? Um, not really. No. I mean, looking forward to watching the Xfinity Series again because obviously they had an off off week. But uh, Shane Van Gisbergen is racing in the Cup Series on this weekend. Yeah, and that that's always a and name to watch out for. He's in the. Uh, I think he's in the sixteen. Yes, he is. He's in the sixteen for college racing because AJ Allmendinger, the road course legend, is on is r- driving the thirteen. All right, two good names to keep an eye out for. Shane uh, Van Gisbergen actually. Has the third best odds right now to win behind Tyler Reddick and Chase Elliott. Okay, all right, all right. I was gonna go put some, put some DraftKings money on him, but never mind. Ricky, you can bet on uh, oh, the legend Timmy Hill is back Ooh, too. He's that's the, my long shot. The, the I'm gonna plus, put a dollar uh, on plus forty thousand. Who yeah, put his a dollar? Eye, his eyes are tied w- tied with Kaz Grawl and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Put a dollar on each of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right well folks i want to say thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's edition of racing hotspot um don't forget to follow us on social media as well as all of our social channels website uh available on spotify and apple podcasts like i said follow us on facebook and instagram and uh yeah for jordan jenkins my name is devin poslesny we'll see you all next week after the circuit of the americas as well as other sporting motorsports events in the world.